Morning, it's Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. It is Monday, the 15th of April, 2019. Um, thank you for coming and visiting, whether it's your first time or you've been here before. I have got a bunch of stuff on my table to share with you. I went to three different needle workshops. I met up with a whole bunch of different people. I've received some stitchy mail, I've made purchases, I've got projects. I have piles all across my table here. So, start with first Thursday meetup at Acorns and Threads. We do this every month. We've been doing it now for a year and a half, I think it is. And it's fantastic. It, it's fun. The way this group had it kind of ebbs and flows sometimes you'll have the same people coming over and over again sometimes you'll have people show up every couple of months life gets in the way people show up when they can we get out of town visitors that show up with us so first thursday meetup there was 10 of us um people had come for acorns spring fling and so they showed up for the meetup too. And it was just a lot of fun. Um, the people that were there were Lisa Rael and Shelly. She has a YouTube video, Shelly Key X Stitch. If you don't watch her, you need to go check her out and you need to look at her April 1st video because, okay, watch it once and then watch it a second time because it's funny and I can't believe that she does it with a straight face, but she's good. Darlene was there. Linda Jo, Pretty Southern was there. She hasn't been there for a while because her work takes her out of town. Um, Marion, Margaret, and Jennifer, who have all been coming to the last three, maybe four meetups and our fairly regular people now were there, and Stephanie and Wendy, Pixie Dust Stitchers, and myself. And as usual, had a great time talking, sharing, looking at the different projects people were working on. I stitched some buttons on Darlene's piece. I don't know what it's called, but I stitched on six bunny butt buttons say it fast, bunny butt buttons. I stitched them on for her. They were just itty bitty teeny tiny little things. It was a good time, it was a good time. Friday I went down to Starlight Stitchery in Corvallis and I met up with Michelle Garrett and Bendy Stitchy, we all know her. Um, with Sarah King, our Stitching Kingdom. She had come to town to do Acorn Spring Fling. She was there with her daughter Izzy and her mom Carrie. And there was a picture that I posted on Instagram that day um, of all of us with Pamela and Amanda, the shop owners of Starlight Stitchery. We had lunch together after doing some shopping. I also met up with, well, it was kind of a coincidence that I met her there at the shop. Amelia was, was there and I had already had plans to meet up with her and Carol Lee. I met these ladies last summer through Instagram at Acorns and Threads and they were over for Spring Fling and our plan was that we were going to meet up on Sunday and so there was... I met a lot of people and I went to a lot of shops and I did a lot of shopping. After going to Starlight Stitchery when all of us kind of split and, and went our own ways, I went over to check out a new needlework shop here in Oregon. It's called Exclamation Point. It's in Lebanon, Oregon. And a couple weeks ago, Michelle Marr, who is Romantic Tangles here on YouTube, She's one of the people that comes up to our first Thursday meetups. She did a walkthrough video of the shop and it is mostly set up for Needlepoint. Um, I 
I think she said the building is 900 square feet. She's got a main room and two small rooms. One of the small rooms has yarns. Um, the other one is full of flosses. She does have some totes that have cross stitch patterns. A lot of them are older patterns and she has a website. So I'm going to, I'm going to link Starlight Stitchery and exclamation point in the drop down box. Um, check out both of them because I know that Michelle is going to be doing a live sale from Starlight Stitchery here soon. They have some older patterns. So does exclamation point. Go check them out. Okay. So. Sunday evening, I met up with Carolee and Amelia after they had gone up um, to Acorn Spring Fling. They came down to my house and we had dinner and we spent four hours, three and a half, four hours stitching. And it was a great time. Like I said, I didn't go to Spring Fling, but I went to lots of places and I met up with lots of people and I did lots of stitching and it was all good. Carolee is the one, and I know I've talked about her before in my videos. When I first met up with these two ladies at Acorns, um, she's the one that brought me the Harry Potter chocolate frog cards. And when Mark and I opened them that night, both cards in there were Salazar Slytherin. And I commented about that on video. So a little while later, she sent me a lovely little package and in it were two more chocolate frogs. And both of those cards were Salazar Slytherin. Four frogs, four Salazar. So she had sent me another package here not too long ago, and this time her nephew had been over and he thought the frogs were for him, so he ate the candy, but they sent me the cards. This time they were Dumbledores. So when they came over to my house Sunday night, she didn't bring me any chocolate frogs. She brought me a chocolate wand. She brought me Dumbledore's chocolate wand. my mind can be rather naughty. How exactly does one go about eating Dumbledore's chocolate wand? There's a wizard spell sheet included. Flick and swish. No, that was, yeah, I did it wrong, whatever. Okay, I want to do some stitching mail before I get into cross stitch because it's part of the pile. I had, when I did my giveaway here not too long ago, the lady that won it, um, this was the pass, the stash of Rest Thy Scissors and Wool. Her name is Caroline, and she lives here in Oregon, but she lives on the other side of Oregon. She sent me this gorgeous card, and it's handmade, but she didn't make it. Her mom did. And it's stamped, and it's layered, and there's little buttons on it, and it's just beautiful. I mean, really, it's, and, and it's totally me. Totally me. In it, she had included some week's dye work. This is trick or treat. I have no idea what I'm gonna use that on, but it's pretty. Browns and oranges and yellows and golds. Trick or treat. And then I received some mail from across the pond. Carrie and Stitches, who is another lady that you should be watching. 
I remember sometime last year meeting up with Michelle for a first Thursday meetup at Acorns and she had received a miniature Biscornu from Carrie and it was absolutely gorgeous. She sent me one. And I have to tell you, I've only made one Biscornu and I didn't manage to stitch it correctly, but not only not only did she stitch it correctly, she put beads around it. It has a little skull on it. Okay, come on. Hang the way I want you to. It has a little skull on it. And if you look at that, it is beaded around the edges. It, <sighs> Carrie, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And a lovely card. So I was really excited. I got both of those on the same day. It was just a really nice surprise to come home to. Mm -hmm. I ordered from Kitten Stitcher and received it. What's this called? Antique, Antique Locks and Keys. I saw this on Sarah's video, um, Sarah King, Our Stitching Kingdom, and really, really liked it. I like old keys, so I'm looking forward to stitching this. I haven't figured out what size I wanna do yet, but that's part of my haul that, I, that I've got. And I got the lovely little card that she's been sending out with all of her goodies. And then, Well, I was going to talk about her later, but I'll talk about her now. Vicki, Stitch and Button. She and I um, have a stitch along coming up. We are going to be stitching uh, Plum Street, Scary One. She was on, she made a guest appearance on Sunshine Stitchers with EJ and Gary. Shelia wasn't there. And they were talking about this upcoming stitch along for Scary One that we're gonna start May the 4th. She also showed her stitching. She is working on Ink Circles Elegant Squids. That's the pattern that I sent to her. And on that pattern, she had this needle minder. Ursula is my favorite princess. She is. Yeah, I know you're all gonna go, she's a wicked witch. Ursula is my favorite princess. She also sent me a Gryffindor Frogger. And, and, and a peep. And a nitty bitty duckling. So anyway, that's all my mail. I don't feel like I'm as organized in this video as I, I usually try to be, but oh well. So anyway, May the 4th, we're going to start Plum Street, scary one. I have all the flosses. I found some leftover, um, this is a Vanna. I think it's a 30 count. And that's what I'm going to stitch mine on. Vicki decided that the hashtag for this stitch along is hashtag Audrey is a scary one. And I am perfectly fine with that because that means every time she posts a picture, every time Gary from Sunshine Stitchers posts a picture using that hashtag, they're going to be thinking of me. Yeah, that's right.
Alrighty then. Okay. Stitching. Real live stitching. We're getting there. I've told you that I have been having my girls stitch for me. And they have been coming over on Tuesdays and we've been sitting down and working together on their pieces. And two weeks ago I decided to start stitching this same pattern myself. The reason I'm stitching it is because I have an exchange coming up and that's why I got this pattern originally. Oops. That's why I got the pattern originally was to use for my exchange. But then I thought this would be perfect for my girls to stitch for me so that I have some little pieces to put up on my coffee and tea canisters. This is the pattern, and this is Miss Rowan's piece. Rowan was having problems, um, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before when she was stitching the orange inside the flames, she was doubling up on her threads. I hadn't explained to her, you know, how when we put our floss, we always have the tail. Well, I hadn't told her that she has to move the thread, the needle in the thread. So she was doubling up on, on the orange inside of her flames. And we had to pick it out like three times and, and she got pretty fed up with that that day. When they come over on Tuesdays, they're stitching maybe a half an hour. I don't want to push them. I don't want to stress them out. I want them to have some fun, but I want to have something made for me by my girls. So last Tuesday, she started working up the side of her coffee cup and hers is going to be a coffee cup, not a teacup. So this is where Miss Rowan is at. This is where Miss Riley is at. Miss Riley is doing the teacup for me. And she ran into the same problem with hers where she was doubling up on the thread not as bad as, as what Rowan had, but we got that figured out. Then last Tuesday, she's sitting over here stitching and she goes, Grandma, I think I made a mistake. And like right about here on the pattern, she had doubled it again, so she had stitches all the way out to here. I was so proud of her that she caught her mistake herself. So I helped her. We frogged it back out to where it's supposed to be. This is where she's at on her teacup. This is where Rowan is at on her coffee cup. And honestly, I think both of them are doing really, really good. So like I said, I started stitching this also. I'm stitching mine on linen. I'm stitching it on feldspar and I am filling in mine. I'm doing the teacup because like I said, mine is for an exchange. I have a plan on how I want to finish it and we'll see what happens. Alrighty. I have so many, so many things scattered across the table. I couldn't remember where I put things. Um, I told you I am stitching on the Mill Hill kit. This is Sister Sun Brother Moon, which just sounds backwards to me because the sun is supposed to be masculine and the moon is supposed to be feminine. It's the way I know it. I know. I just need to get over it. This is where I have gotten with this. This is the project that I have been taking to work with me. So I think I've made good progress on this. 
the box that I showed you that I want to put it on, um, when Amelia and Kara Lee were over and we were talking, Amelia suggested that I take the box and mark off the size of the box, which is something I already knew I was going to have to do. So this right here is the edge of the design. This right here is the edge of the design. When I put the box underneath it, I realized I had to take out two rows of stitching down here on the bottom because it would have been too long. And then I came over here and I marked the side where the other side of the box will be. I'm losing two rows of stitching off of the pattern across the bottom and two rows of stitching from the side over here in order to make it fit on that box. Lisa, who was up at the first uh, Thursday meetup, she and I were talking about this and we are going to be getting together later on this summer and she is going to help me finish that box into a little sewing kit. Because I thought that this would look really cute on top of that. And then with that box, so I have a project in mind. She's gonna help me finish it. I bought a package of these bags off of Amazon. There's five of them. They're all different colors. I think it was 12 bucks. Amazon Prime, free shipping. I've purchased a lot these last two weeks for me. I've purchased a lot. What else have I purchased, you say? Well, let me show you. So, not at first Thursday meetup, but last Thursday I went back up because I had to get some floss for another project that I want to start. And while I was there, I picked up this Rivera's, the skeleton and the mermaid, or the pirate and the mermaid. because I had seen on Stitching in the Barn, she did that bus tour and she went to a couple different shops and as she was going through this one shop, she flashed, she flashed past a shop model and I just really, really liked it. And I went up and I asked, the ladies at Acorns, I said, well, it's a stack and I know it has a pumpkin. And from that, they were able to figure out which pattern I wanted and it's a Barbara Anna. It's called Spooky Tree. I am constantly amazed by the ladies up there that if you ask them something and you give them the minimal amount of information, they can find what you want. This is cute. So cute. So I had to have that one too. At the beginning of the year, I took like seven or eight projects that I have upstairs, patterns that I have upstairs, and I put them in a project bag and, and this was the starts that I wanted to do this year. haven't started any of them and I keep buying more I think I need Carrie to keep me in line yeah at Starlight Stitchery I I walked into the shop and I spotted this one this is the Stitchy Rabbit the old curiosity shop and it's a dark picture, but it's these shelves and there are books and wounds and potions and skulls and all sorts of witchy accoutrement. So yeah, I had to have that one. And I'm already formulating plans in my brain on how I want to 
stitch this and what kind of fabric I want to stitch it on. The other thing I got down there was an Annalie Waite Designs. Hooray for Halloween. These are a bunch of smalls. So I'm thinking that these would be good for some exchange coming up. Yeah. So I will be doing some of those. And then I also picked up this little free pattern from Prairie Schooler. It's like 40 by 40 in a little house. So Starlight Stitchery has a bunch of Prairie Schoolers, old ones. Um, exclamation point had a bunch of prairie schoolers go check out their websites you might find things that you're looking for all right <laughs> little shop of horrors I am keeping the floss for my little shop of horrors in my bags plus, what's this called? Floss Keeper. It's the 40 count one, which obviously I'm only using half of it. But I love this. I, I, I just, I love this fabric. When I showed you Little Shop of Horrors the last time, I had part of the vine done on one side. I had most of the vine done on the other side. I now have the whole border done, all of the vine done, and the outline of Audrey herself. And I've started filling her in with the light green in some of the areas here. So she is coming along quite nicely and I'm hoping that I can get her. I'm, I'm thinking I will probably have her done sometime this week because like I said, all I'm doing is I'm filling in Audrey herself. So I like the way that this looks. Um, after I showed it to you last time, I had to come in and rip out those three letters there because I was one thread off. And it looked okay between the two R's, but between the R and the S, you could tell that it was really off. So I had to pull all those out and redo them. I also realized when I was stitching down this side, I had reversed the colors on the vines. Big freaking deal. They look good just the way they are. And I am so tickled. I am so unbelievably happy to say that I have a finish. Do you know what it is? I got her done last Friday. Alphonse Mucha, The Moon. She is totally, completely, 100% done. And I will probably be taking her to the frame shop here in the next couple of days. Can I get all of her in there? No. She took just under two years to stitch. She is my third Alphonse Mucha. When I did Morning Star for my daughter Erin, she took 13 months. When I stitched Evening Reverie for myself, she took 11 months. My issue with this one is that while she is absolutely gorgeous, once you get past this point here, you end up with this very dark palette and because you're working so close to it you don't see it you know you don't see it 
It's when you step back and you look at it that you get to see the details on her. She is gorgeous. She is stunning. When I decided to do the hashtag finish one challenge, I think I posted the pers first picture of her on January 28th. I still had almost six pages to do down below. And then I realized that I had maybe three and a half months to get her done. And I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to do it. But I have gotten a lot of support from people on Instagram and people commenting on their videos. Thank you, Heather. Link is my homeboy. Someone else you should be watching. And with everybody's encouragement and kind words and commenting and posting their pictures using that hashtag, she is done. And she is done sooner than the deadline, the deadline that I had given myself, which is May the 4th be with you. Because I started her on May the 4th be with you 2017. So I will be taking her to the frame shop in a couple of weeks. I know she's going to cost a pretty penny to be framed, but I want to take her to the same place I had the other two done, have her framed in a similar style, and then I have two more. I have two more Alphonse Mukas to stitch. I don't think I'm going to get started on one of those for a while. I'm going to give myself a, a break from having a big project. The last thing that I want to share with you is, like I said, at the end of the month, I am having my birthday. And I've decided that I'm going to have a birthday start. This was the pattern that Janine twisted my arm and made me buy. I mean, she was standing behind the counter and she showed it to me and it was like, yeah, I have to have that. But I have to have it. So Mark is taking me over to the coast for three days, four nights, the end of April for my birthday. And I am going to take Quaker Gone Haunted. This is by Michelle Inc. Needlework Designs. And I'm going to start on this one. I purchased some of the flosses for this at Acorns. I purchased some of the flosses for this at Starlight. One of the things that I figured out with uh, Janine and JoLynn's help at Acorns is that one of the called for colors on the back here, it is um, a silk in colors, silk in colors from the Thread Gatherer, number 277 Plum Ginger. That color is not currently available. It's a discontinued color. So we had to kind of sort of look it up and with both those ladies help, Janine and JoLynn, um, I picked out Weeks Dye Work Oyster. So the other colors that I'm using in this, most of these, um, Okay, there's supposed to be three silken colors from here. There's supposed to be two Simply Wools from the Gentle Arts. The only wool that I am using is the Gentle Arts Fisherman's Wharf. Everything else that I'm using is just a regular floss. I am going to be stitching this on lakes, Lakeside Ligon, Linen. Yeah. Words, Stephanie. In flax. So that is going to be my color palette. I am going to use Fisherman's Wharf, which is not a called for color. Um, this is the one that I have that's the wool. I'm gonna be using that one for the tree in it. So here's my pattern. There's my fabric and my floss. I will be starting that the end of April on May the 4th. 
with Vicki and Gary. I will be starting Plum Street Scary One. So in the meantime, I am going to try to get Audrey finished, uh, get some more work done on my Mill Hill kit. And before I leave, I have to show you my new needle minder. Acorns and Threads. Why? Because they're my needle workshop. Because I'm spending more and more time up there and I'm getting to know these ladies and I'm really getting to love these ladies and because I got this while Michelle was over at McKenna's Stitch Nanigans and it could drive her crazy. Anyway, I think I have showed you everything that I wanted to show you. Um, I think that this is probably one of my least coordinated um, videos. I didn't really have any stories to tell, but you know, I can't tell a story every time. Yeah. So I will list all the shops down below. I'm going to list a whole bunch of people that I mentioned in this video down below. Um, check them all out. Have a great stitching week. Live long and stitch on my friends. Bye-bye.